<clears throat> Hello, all you hardcores out there. How are you doing? It's Russ here from Porky's Corner, the voice of hardcore box. I'm just going to have a little bit of a mess around with uh, camera. No, that's all right. Uh, I've got Julian on. Just going to do a quick one while he's on his dinner break. I'm not going to be very good today, am I? How you been keeping, Julian? Anyway, all right. All right, mate. It's been a few weeks since we spoke. I mean, you've been in Spain, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hang on a yeah, I've been in Spain, mate. Not sunning me, son, though. You've been grafting, mate. Been working long hours. I've seen some of your messages. Yeah, I've been working my ass off. There's no. Uh... I bet. There's no shortcuts. <laughs> There's no shortcuts, is the kid? There's uh... no shortcuts in life, mate. I bet Eddie Earn, the five and oh ice man, is now six and oh, four by way off. What's what's going on? <laughs> Who's he knocked out? It's impressive stuff. I mean, uh, I saw something on IFL earlier. Um, no, none other than his dad. Um, his old man. It, I think he did a. They had a bit of a bout, a bit of a three round bout. Him and his his dad's revealed on IFL or on some news source. I don't know. And Eddie dropped him twice in the second round, and I think they had to retire Barry at the end of the second, mate. So he's six and zero now, four by way off. He's Look, he's like Reg, Reg Guttridge always said, he says, you can't knock an unbeaten record. Eddie, <laughs> why don't you just come clean like Tyson Fury should about seven million to charity or John Fury about MI5 watching in front of them. <laughs> Once you come out with whoppers like that, just shut it down. Because it's become embarrassing now, isn't it? Because... Only footage we've got is him knocking Spotty Frank about last year. That's it. Yeah. Frank didn't look like he'd trained for that one, did he? I um, think he'd just come off the sofa, to use your expression, mate. Off the sofa, mate. Just get out of bed, mate. Yeah. It's it's one of those. We're having a bit of fun with it. It's tongue-in-cheek, but it, it's just that thing, isn't it? It's what we call stolen valour. I mean, who cares if anybody's boxed or not? You've heard me say this before, right? Getting in a ring don't make you a man. You know, getting up every day and working for your family, that's what makes you a man. My, my, does, my, yeah. dad always, my dad always said that. He said, you know, it takes balls to get into a ring. You know, bravo to people who have done it. But if you haven't done it, you don't get ripped to pieces. It's just the guy down the pub, isn't it, who tells you that he had a promising yeah. amateur career. That's what you happens. know what I mean? That's what happens, mate. But, uh, all right, uh... A lot's gone on since we last spoke. Obviously, you were a bit fed up last week with boxing, weren't you? I've uh, probably missed about three or four shows in the last couple of weeks. I didn't watch the Fury Chisora fight. As yeah. I said, I had no problem with it. I had a problem paying for it, so I didn't pay for it. I'm not bothered watching the highlights. Um, that's the truth. I haven't seen it. I couldn't tell you who the referee, what colour shorts Chisora and Fury had on. And I get, I get like that. But the thing is, Russell, is I get like that more and more now as it goes along. Yeah. More and more, I'm just not bothering watching the shows. I know what you mean, mate. I know what you mean. Uh, you, so you didn't see the Shizora Fury fight then, no? I mean, I, I think we all thought, knew what was going to happen. I guess if I want to watch it, it sounds like I just need to watch the second fight over again. And it's yeah. the same thing. Did you see the Everett Bridges uh, fight with that girl, the Aussie Bird? Again, zero interest in watching that. I'm not one of these people, by the way, who says, I won't watch it, and then secretly I'll watch it on the side. I've got no interest in watching somebody who's eight and one. Um, you know, she's got beaten by, she got hammered by Shannon Courtney, who's like six and two or something. This yeah. is like, I'm not disrespecting anybody. I just said it takes guts to get in a ring. But this is white collar stuff, white collar level. Um, and I've got no intention of watching it. I'm guessing, I heard some comment that she said, I'm going to break the internet. I assume she means we watch her while at the way in. I didn't watch that either, mate. Is, that, is this where it's come now? Is this where it's come to? Yeah. Oh, middle aged men. Ogling some last in a G string uh, away. What is all that about? It's care. disgraceful, isn't it? It's you know, we're, we're all men, we all 
Well, they're allowing yeah, them to get away with it, but they're encouraging this for views and stuff like that. But they're dragging the sport through the mud, basically, aren't they? Nobody said this girl's not an hard trainer and that. This is about two yeah. years friend of mine. I speak to him daily, but he knows this is not my cup of tea, this kind of thing. But he's got to get a living, hasn't he? You understand that? But it's like I said to him overnight, I said, Mark, what are you running there, a gym or a brothel? Honestly, Mark, Mark's a good guy. Jimmy Tibbs is an absolute legend. The died in the world bo boxing people. But ultimately, what it boils down to is Ebony Bridges, and I understand this, she's going to do whatever she feels right to promote herself and sell herself. I, I think someone said that she'd gone on OnlyFans. I keep hearing about OnlyFans. I don't really know what it is, but I, I can guess. But do you know what? At some point when you start selling a piece of yourself, you're going to pay for it down the line, you know, uh, you read about this type of things, like people have done all kinds of things in, in careers and that, and like, I know we're going to di divert slightly now, but like, you know, porn stars and all that kind of thing, it screws them up. It absolutely screws them up in, in adult life. Now, Ebony Bridges is not a porn star, clearly. Um, Amazing, though, isn't she? training. I you just took the words out of my mouth. I think that somebody else is who's training. The other bird is, and there's another bird coming from that sort of world. I don't know if she's porn. I think she might be glamour, but I've heard there could be free. So, I mean, it's like I said, what, what you're running, Mark, a gym or a brothel, they were laughing, but they've got to do the best what they can, can't they? I mean, Dylan's not with him. Uh, he's Listen. got Johnny Fisher. He's raw as oh, in it. What's that other kid? John Edges. He's raw, isn't he? Edges is raw, good amateur. But what you've got, basically, is, as I was saying... If you give them a platform, you can't blame people for taking advantage of that platform. No. It's a little bit like like nobody's saying Ebony Bridges can't fight. We we all saw the fight with Courtney. Loads yeah. of guts, loads, ton, tons of um, heart. She took a beating. She hung in there. But what it is right again? This is this is white collar level boxing. This is if these women truly want to be boxers like this porn star that we're talking about. They never go to an amateur gym, do they? They never go the ABA route and go down that and truly learn their craft, you know, like some of the, you know, like the Katie Taylors and those guys who truly love the sport of boxing. What they do is they're just jumping on something that's like a trend right now and they're taking advantage of it. And I'm on the side of some of the opponents of Ebony Bridges who are saying, you know what, I've got, I've got young daughters. I want to grow up. I want my daughters to come, grow up to be independent women, but I want them to grow up, you know, to, to have respect for themselves and to have a career and really something. And all you're doing is you're cheapening what we do. You're cheapening everything that the Katie I, Taylor's... I'm not going to say any names here, but that's how uh, other professional females who I know personally, I'm not going to say the name, they're like, what, what's that? They're not, do you know and that, you... that's the thing. They're just the, the demeaning the sport, just, just in the way that I guess slightly different, but Jake Paul, these guys are demeaning the sport. I mean, you've got, you know, John Fury, for example. John Fury, ex-professional fighter, son's heavyweight champion of the world, taking his shirt off and doing this WWE type screaming and shouting. This is demeaning boxing. These are guys, right? Let's have a and battle I'll... royale and a boxer trick. Honestly. Like watching me. From the the, these, are, these are guys who say they're historians and the the, you know, oh. the heavyweight championship of the world. And they're not historians because if they were historians, they'd know that the heirs of Charles's and the Bob Fitzsimmons and those guys would be just turning away at this nonsense. It's not, they're not historians. They're just, it's, it's cringe. It's like Peter Fury says, it's become a, a cringe sport full of cringe characters, full of cringe pundits. And it's such a shame because we do have some really good kids out there. Though, and yeah. we have some... I mean, look at Caroline Dubois. I watched her at the weekend. Yes, she was fighting somebody who was overmatched, but she can fight. Caroline Dubois can absolutely fight. She's sitting down on her punches. She's a world she's champion got... already. She beats the world champion in her weight division, doesn't she, easily? It, easy. She's absolutely brilliant. It's not often you see southpaws with that front hand so powerful. And the way she sits right down on her shots, a little bit like Natasha Jonas does a lot more now in the past couple of years. These these ladies can fight. The dedicated professionals, the hard working, and then you've got these other people just wandering around in lingerie, just demeaning for me. What is people working hard to to put boxing on the map? 
know, when you look at people like Savannah and Chantel Cameron and people like that, you know, Natasha Jonas, then they'll look at people like Ebony Bridges and she's getting a lot of commercial deals, Ebony. But she, she's not that, you know, they know what, what's going on. Don't oh, clever know. lady, very clever lady. Uh, but don't make out that you're all for boxing and legacy because to me, it is whole behavior, the whore in themselves. I know yeah. a lot of people have to wall themselves in boxing, but that is shocking. And um, but what can you do? I mean, it's it's allowed. It's not illegal. It's, the, the the purists don't like it. Really. The platform's there, and that's what I'm saying. But do you know what? I always I hear this all the time with the Jake Pauls, the Ebony Bridges. They're bringing new people to boxing, but what, who are they bringing to boxing? What kind of? Well, we said this. Followers? They said this three years ago. Eddie's going to say, "You watch." All these people drip into boxing. Now, remember what he said. He was involved with that Logan Paul and all that, and he brought them over all that well. One said he did. One said he realised that it's not filtering into your call shows and O2 and all that. He cut it off dead, didn't he? He cut it off. He had a go. I have to give Eddie his credit. But it hadn't, it hadn't filtered into boxing, has it? Because if it, if it did, Carl Greaves' show that Teddy were a pundit at last month would have been chocker. Dennis's Magna show would have been chocker and his Leeds one mm -hmm. last month. They weren't. So all these YouTubers, it's not everybody was saying, yeah, it's gonna filter into boxing, boxing's gonna it's boom, buy me for the boom. Load of rubbish. I've said this before, Russell. My yeah. daughter went to see my daughter went to see KSI years ago against never. Joe Weller. Yeah, that, she'd oh, never been she'd never been to see another boxing. She don't watch boxing, mate. She's not she, do you know what? If it was Logan Paul and he was washing his car, she'd have paid to see that. This is what they do. They're not bringing boxing fans in, these YouTubers. The YouTubers will watch them do anything. And it's as simple as that. Yeah, I see what you mean, yeah. Anyway, let's move on from that Ebony Bridger. She's had a, a title defence, wherever it is. Good luck to her, but it's not for me. Right. Good luck to her. Connor Bed. I know it's a sore subject with you, this. But uh, it's come out that Conor Ben is going to be exonerated in the next seven days, apparently. This is what the word doing the great round. Of, the word around the campfire is he's, he's going to be all right in the next seven days. And it's just business as usual. What do you think to that if he gets off with this through contamination? Well, two points of that, two points to this. And I'm, this might sound quite extreme. The first point is we predicted this quite recently. Didn't you we? did, I did, you did. I, I did, I said he's going to get away with it because if you are VAD or the Boxing Board of Control, there's only so much money that you're going to put into this and testing and defending or prosecuting, whatever you want to put it. There's only so much you're going to put into this. But Zone and Eddie and Matchroom are in a really difficult place in the UK market. So it's worth them throwing absolutely everything at this. And I said this before. Um, we saw it with um, with the football, OJ Simpson. Yeah, we saw he had that absolute dream team of a defence to put enough doubt to avoid a prosecution. He later got found guilty of that, by the way, in a civil court and had to pay multi-millions. Get your head around that, you can't. So that's the first thing, is if you throw enough money at something, you're going to get the resolution that you want. Not exonerated, throw enough doubt on it, you might not be found guilty. There's a very, very big difference between being innocent and not being found guilty. There's a there's a cash difference between that. That's the first point. The second point is then what we need to do, yeah, get rid of VADA, get rid of UCAD, and get rid of all the anti-doping agencies because VADA clearly doesn't work then. If Connor is innocent and those two tests were a waste of time, forget testing. Because what we're basically saying now is, this is extreme, but you know how passionate I feel about this. Let everybody cheat. Let everybody do what they want, because ultimately, two failed tests then don't mean anything. So this is where we're at. It was the most predictable thing. I either thought he'd get a soft ban or he'd get off in the, in recent months. And it's going to be the same thing. If he gets a six-month ban, he'll have already served it. Or he might get a ban by the UK, the British Boxing Board of Control, but the WBC might have had a different set of people looking at the results and they might come to a different conclusion. Yeah. So ultimately, 
this guy is going to get his license back. He's going to go earn a hell of a lot of money. But I guess the, the court of public opinion, you know, will will come out. Look, and what we'll finally say is if he genuinely is innocent, genuinely, then good luck to him. He's done nothing wrong. But how have how have Bard then got this so wrong? How have they got this so wrong and what's the point? Yeah, well, what was going to be the point in even testing people? Because if you've got enough money and enough yep. backing, this is what's going to happen. They're just going to snowball these small testing agencies and overwhelm them, aren't they? Like Fury did with his. Liam Cameron didn't have that opportunity. Dennis was fighter. He got a four-year ban for one, one line yep. of coke. One line, a, a recreational line. Now... Tyson had a recreational line of refusal of a test and a steroid test, and he only got two mm -hmm. years. How can that be? So there's there's that correlation, isn't there, between the the revenue that you create, like with Alvarez, Canelo Alvarez, and the revenue that you generate and the fine that you get. Um, and that's that's where we're at. People don't care. People will go see Conor Ben in their droves. And people will turn around and say, but he's being proved innocent. And it's just that thing. It's a little bit like like criminal law. And, you know, you, you know about the <laughs> Crown Prosecution Service and how this works. You can be arrested for something. You can be prosecuted for something. But if the Crown Prose Prosecution Services don't think there's enough evidence for a conviction, it doesn't go to Crown Court. That's the law. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody who is exonerated is innocent, but it doesn't mean everyone's guilty as well. But what it means, it's a numbers game, isn't it? Yeah. There's only so much money you can throw at something. To, to send someone to court costs an absolute fortune. fortune. You know, barristers, juries, juries, everything costs a fortune. So that's why you get a lot of people, you see them online at the moment, these well-known YouTubers, with a lot of no further actions to their name. And then the, the, the shouting about their innocence, it doesn't necessarily mean you're innocent. It just means there either wasn't enough evidence or there wasn't enough money to throw out something. Let me just stop. Let me, do, let me just stop you there, right? Years ago, when I were 20, I used to go out with a solicitor from Robham. She worked at uh, Oxley and Coward in Robham. Now, she said to me that when stuff's they're not taking it any further it doesn't mean you're not guilty it means it's on fire if they get any more evidence they'll come back for you it's exactly. like tony yoka the guy who got the gold medal over joe joyce is urine test because he failed into his early pro career his urine test will still be tested every time there's a change in the testing process for years mm -hmm. to come. so joe joyce could still go Get his gold cutting one day. He might not, though. But you see where I'm coming from. So yeah. it, it is as like left on file, isn't it? Because and this is the Conor Benson. Yeah. This is this the Conor, Conor Benson. Benson. Yeah, but this this yeah. would be totally different because they've got that much money. He was pretty cocksure from the beginning. Well, my lawyers will deal with because when you're a millionaire and you've got big backing, and he's really their only pay per view star now after Big Beach, isn't he? So yeah. they're not gonna. Let him just take a four year ban like Liam Cameron. Whereas Liam, when he failed this, Dennis went, You're joking me. He went, No. And they went, Oh, well, uh, we, I think it was Chris or it Liam, I can't remember, said we failed. They had an adverse finding on the Sam Sheedy fight, but the board said they didn't have to notice anybody because they weren't going to go out any further with it. So Chris and Liam didn't tell, say anything to Dennis. So I didn't even know. I was none of nobody, Michelle, none of us know. But then when that come out, then it's just went like that and left Liam. Otherwise, it might have gone the other way. I don't know. I didn't agree with it. But I can understand Chris not wanting to sell because the fighters, the trainer's always going to go with fighter, isn't it? Every time. Well, Chris yeah. Medley's in an awkward position there, isn't it? And Liam, I don't really think he cared. He won't really bother it, but... Like I said, Dennis went, no, no, you should have said something earlier. Now there's this, collect your cards job. A bit like Dave Allen. Your job's to train. You're paid to train. You're not training. Yeah. Good night, Vienna. And you've got to be tough love. Dennis was like that, tough love. But I felt for Chris in that situation. But 
Liam should have never got four year. Not when Canelo's getting six months for steroids and Fury getting two years for steroids, cocaine and refusal. Fury told me we're looking at 12 year. In Peter Fury's gym, I wish I'm looking at 12 year. I'll say you'd be all right. Two years ago, didn't he? And that's and that is exactly it, isn't it? Is the, the surname goes a long way, doesn't it? Like Liam Cameron's not going to fill out stadiums, he's not going to be pay per view, and he's not going to have that resource to well, get we'll the best events possible. In one wheel drank with IBF number 12, and he was Commonwealth champion. I think he was 20 summer and five. He was on a good yeah. run. He was a decent kid. Yeah, decent ABA champion and all that. But, yeah. You know, Maybe discipline. I don't know. Something happened along the lines, but they all wanted to sign him. But he, he stayed local. But I feel sorry for Liam. But I, like I said, I remember Tyson. I, I remember sat there. I've even got photos in here somewhere. I've got photos of the day it were. Two seconds, I'm going to show you. I said I'm looking at a 12-year ban. Yeah, this is how I'm not all bad, am I? Tyson, there, me, Dennis, me and Robbie, yep. that day. 12 year I'm looking. I said, you're not getting 12 year. Not a chance. You're unlucky. But, uh, you got two years, didn't you? Liam should have got four, shouldn't have got four year. But all these people that are getting done for doping now, the back dating it. Canelo only fights twice a year anyway. So giving him a six month ban mm. don't mean Jack. Whatever does it? It doesn't mean anything, and this is the Conor Ben thing we've spoke about it so many times. And I, I'll repeat the point: they'll throw enough doubt onto this, and they only have to have a, a you know a possible cause what could have caused that, whether it's you know egg contamination. And if you can draw a clean line, and you can convince somebody that that could have happened, not did happen, could have happened for somebody who's not been you know in trouble before and not been found for drugs before you, you're probably gonna have to give him the benefit of the doubt and it's a massive benefit of the doubt but it's another for me it's another nailing not, not another nailing bo boxing's coffin it's another nailing boxing's kind of integrity it's never been a pure sport it's always been had elements of corruption but now again like i've said before there's nothing more predictable russell than rewarding bad behaviour and he's going to be there with his flash gear and in his expensive motors, the best for the best and people will still go watch Conor Ben in their droves but I'll tell you and I've said this before and it's it's not bitterness because I wish I wish pretty much most people good luck in life genuinely um, I only wish I could have achieved a tenth of what he's achieved in boxing but I'm telling you now Conor Ben is not that good um, the chances of him beating a, a Crawford or a Spence are absolutely zero. Yeah. So you can predict where this is going to go, this circus. You can predict the fights he's going to go for. And I remember being on your show about 18 months ago and you said you didn't think he'd win a world title. And I remember saying at that time, really early days when I came on, I says he will win a world title. He will, he'll win some kind of regular belt. Some, some belt, what? is a bit like the Charles Martin Joshua thing where it was completely engineered to pick up that belt. And he'll he'll have a world title belt in his in his living room, mate. And this is just this is why, you know, last week I'm ready to switch switch off from this sport genuinely. I've done this before by the way, I had two years away from it. Because it makes you like this and it's it's massively frustrating, which was why at least when you and I were messaging earlier about the about the Eddie Earn six and all thing. It's just that kind of thing what still makes me laugh, and I think there's you you got to find a bit of humour in this. I know about that. that. I know about that actually. That fight because did you in Bricktop's column in Sun a few years ago? He had a go at Barry Earn and said, "What is he going on about here?" Where apparently he turned around and said, "Well, Eddie's of the age now, and we have to get it on a summer." And Frank took took uh, if Frank rinsed him in his column, I'll laugh in my head off because I always used to read Frank's Sunday morning. Because when yeah. Frank had that Sunday morning column on a Saturday in the sun, no, the Sun newspaper, sorry, on a Saturday morning in the sun, I used to read that column and it were no, but you know, it were uh, 
like Karen Brady had that the Brady punch, didn't she, Colin? She was pretty straight out there. Yeah, well. yeah. I thought Frank was totally straight. He had a couple. He had a few digs at Dennis. One there. Because obviously, when Dennis got on scene, he uh, he had Clinton and they signed Atten and that, and he was making waves, wasn't it? And yeah. Frank, Frank was saying in one of his columns, yeah, they got to meet Dennis. And this is what happened. I'll tell the truth. I've told this on channel before. He was shaking everybody's hand, Dennis, and he, he shook Dennis's hand. Dennis said it was something like that, and it, some weird antics. <laughs> and Dennis says, I grabbed him, yanked him over to me, says, come here, you bag of bones, give me a proper handshake. So they were never going to get on from then. From then on, yeah. And he said, yeah, blah, blah, blah. He come to me, give me a funny answer. He was one of them. He says another one who was supposed to be going to take my throne. Uh, he, this is aimed at Mick Hennessy. He goes, his handshake were like a wet fish. So I don't know why we're having to go up uh, with, with Mick like that. But uh, he, he, him and Dennis were never going to get, we're never going to go. They ended up. Flipping a coin of a money Warren owed him. I think he'd mentioned it on here, right? Then it's 25. Oh, years. right. I'm, I'm not I said, well, what did you flip coin for then, Dennis? He goes, I lost. I goes, yeah, but even if he'd have owed you 50, he'd have not got it. He did not got it. He'd be flipping coins till he won. So he said, Well, I just did it for crack, didn't I? Because he knew what you were getting it. Well, listen, Warren has done well within the rules. Um, yeah, yeah. He is a boxing man. I, I think he's a bigger boxing man than Eddie, but if you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. I mean, look, we're. Look at what he was feeding David Cleverly when he was WBO world champion, and he only got upgraded because Bremer couldn't get on the flight, could he? Because his bail conditions were, you're not allowed outside Germany. So why are you putting a fight on it, UK, Frank? You know Bremer I mean, can't, he, can't come to fight. He did the same with Hatton with his WBU reign and Joe Calzaghi for the first seven or eight years of his reign yeah, until he moved, yeah, Calzaghi yeah. moved on. Well, they're it protecting was... his fighters and his investment, isn't yeah. it? Calzaghi didn't really fight anybody. You tell me three proper wins on his record. Tell me. Well, I'm a I'm a big Calzaghi fan, as, well, as you know. Tell me three know, wins but... then that you reckon that we reckon are really elite. I thought the Kessler fight. Kessler was a good one, fight. yeah. Jeff uh, Lacey Bra two. B Brian Byron Mitchell was a good good win. He got life and death. It was. It was a decent kid. Was Mitchell Kessler was a good fight, but yeah. I mean, That's his best it, three wins, isn't it, in Lacey? I, I, I'd say so. Um, he I don't want something. to hear all this Roy Jones Hopkins stuff. So no, 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 no. Shot to bits. Shot to bits. They, were both, they were both shot to pieces and both of them dropped him quite heavily, actually. Yeah. Um, they really dropped him heavily. But Carl Zaghi was a good fighter. But if you look at some of those early defences, I mean, we all laughed at the talk of Pudwell defence, didn't we? And then we had the guy who won the uh, that reality TV show. We stopped. Peter Manfredo. Going... What, what about his uh, first Awful. defense in Cardiff? Branco Sobot, a goat herder from Armenia, a goat herder from yeah. Armenia yeah. in Cardiff. First defense. Carl Froch, first defense. Jermaine Taylor had just beat uh, Jeff Lacey and done Hopkins twice before then. And five years later, he was still a world champion. So there's a difference in, in how Joe challenged himself because he's the boss, Joe. He signs up yeah. on it all. So it's well, not knew... a spilt milk. You've got to protect him. We will protect him, Calzaghi. End of. You knew with Calzaghi how bad it was because he knocked out Mario Viti in the first round and then he actually had a rematch with Viti. It was like, I know he was mandated, but when, you, when you're when rematching someone, you, you're blown away in one round. You, you know it's a really poor division, don't you? And, yeah. And the... Uh, the contenders and mandatories are very, very poor. So he should have moved on to bigger fights. And they, they called him stay at home, Joe, didn't they? Yeah, no and, show, Joe, they called him. Yeah, and I, I, I thought Kazaki was brilliant. But it, I mean, you can pick anybody's record apart, but we had seven or eight years of real emptiness with Kazaki, and that's the absolute truth. It was almost like a wasted seven or eight years. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, let's have a look what we've got here. Terence Crawford, David Ebenezer, Carl Reed. Neil Marsh, they're going to be given credit for getting that kid into that position at the first. That's the first thing. Crawford's a top five pound for pound on anybody's top five, isn't it? They've got that kid cool. in there on merit. The former world champion as well. You're a current European champion. He's there on merit. He put up a good show, fell up short. But I give that kid respect. He's a tough kid, isn't it? And I now know why Conor Ben didn't have the minerals to fight him. Do you agree? Absolutely, because this is, in old money, Avenisian is a European-level fighter. 
And that's what you'd expect an elite world champion to do with Avenisi and what he did. But if he stays in his own lane, he's a fantastic fighter. Spenson Crawford for the head and shoulders above everybody at welterweight. And listen, stepping up against the best and getting well beat, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. No. But it's there's no alternative though, other than the, the Neil Marshes to to go down that tough route because their path isn't glittered, is it? It's not like a Conor Ben path, which is glittered. And it's the, there's no easy path to, to winning anything, but there's easier paths. And I think that's what's happening with, with Conor Ben. And we all know if we'd have fought the Chris Congos and even Eastians and maybe even the Marcos of this world, he, he might not have McKinson. been anywhere in the world. Yeah, McKinson. McKinson. Oh, McKinson would absolutely, he wouldn't know what to do with McKinson. He couldn't get close to McKinson. he Stand him on his head. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh. Yeah, I see where you're coming from with that one. Uh, Lawrence Acoli situation. I've got enough time to do this. Are you, are you, yeah, are you doing a one, part one or a part two? I'll have to do part one, though, so I've got a meeting, right. mate, and my, and my, right, my well, battery well, for well, sure. Well, talk 20%. about that. About how long have we been going now? Oh, oh yeah, it's going to go in a minute. All right, then, well, listen, I'll get you on to my, tonight or tomorrow, yeah? You want to do one tonight? Yeah. What you want to do tomorrow? I can do tonight, mate. Tonight's, what, what tonight's absolutely... Um, oh, in fact, no, I've got White Rose with kids. Have you heard me? People are watching this now. Well, I can do it tomorrow, tomorrow. lunchtime if you want. I'll do it tomorrow lunchtime, not a problem, mate. Right, well, listen, you take care. We'll get this out now, and then we'll get some out from tomorrow. Right? Perfect. Right. Thanks take for care, watching, Julian. everybody. Bye-bye. Cheers, buddy. Thank Bye. you. Well, that was Julian. He's obviously he's at work and that. So he's having a late lunch now. But I've got one out for you. I've got one on board for you. I'll get this out now. Okie dokie. Peace out. 20 to 3. <clears throat> Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Share the video. Get to get your property book from Welcome Estates. Winter Salem, Bobby. Big shout out to Spartan as well. Peace out.